All right, hey everybody. Um, so I've had a few requests for some more basic Pro Tools tutorials. Um, one of the which was just a tutorial explaining how I print the individual tracks from Superior or Steven Slate. Uh, I'm gonna do Superior since most people seem to have Superior and like to use that. So today I'm just gonna be looking at the the drum, the essentially the drum tracks and Pro Tools of our last song. I opened a new session, imported them. I'm gonna show you how I set it up to print those. And uh, yeah, so it should be quick and hopefully you learn some stuff. So first of all, you're gonna want an instrument track with uh, Superior Drummer on it, uh, which I have here. So we're gonna open up Superior and you're gonna see in the this is the mixer window. Now, each of the individual drums in Superior has its own fader or own input position, channel, strip, whatever you wanna call it. And at the bottom here, right down here, on each of these, it has its output. Now, what we want is, in, in the Superior Drummer, it comes with a bunch of different outputs you can use. These are the outputs you want to use right here. These are the ones that go to the rest of Pro Tools that you can get access to from the rest of Pro Tools. These buses are buses internally within Superior, so you're not going to use those unless you're going to use Superior for some reason as your mix engine uh, for mixing down the drums. You can absolutely do that if you'd like. Um, but there's no reason you don't need to, uh, and I prefer not to because I like the workflow. Pro, excuse me, I like the workflow of Pro Tools, and I like seeing everything in my Pro Tools edit and mix windows the way it is. Now, if you click multi-channel, I'm not going to do this because it's going to screw everything up, but it will make uh, the drums multi-channel for you. The problem with that is it doesn't really make it multi-channel. It puts all the toms together on one stereo bus. Um, as well as the different symbol elements, the ride and the hat and the overhead, I believe. I don't like that. I like having every tom separate, and I like being able to process them individually, so I want every single element on its own channel within Pro Tools. Now, to do that, it's very simple. You just go down the list and pick outputs that you want. So most of these elements of the drums are mono. For instance, the kick samples are all mono, to the best of my knowledge, as well as the snare samples and the tom samples. The only samples that aren't mono, or I'm not sure about, are the ride, um, the overheads, the ambience, and the reverb. Uh, the mono room is, uh, is mono, obviously, because it says it's mono. But other than that, the only stereo ones are the, excuse me, the hats, possibly, the ride, the overhead, and the ambience and the reverb. So those are the only ones that I would say you need to have a stereo output for. The rest, it's completely up to you. And I'll show you what I did to make mono outputs out of these stereo outputs in the cases where I didn't want a stereo output. Now, I could have used each one of these stereo outputs for each one of these, but I decided not to because I don't like messing. When I have a mono element and I want to pan it in Pro Tools, I don't like having a mono signal on a stereo track because then it's just weird to pan it. The panning is, it doesn't make as much sense to me because you're using you're moving one side in. It's essentially the same as having it on a mono track, but I don't like it. It looks weird. It's complete personal preference. So on this, I had each kick drum track, the kick drum right and kick drum left from it, uh, superior drummer coming out one and two of the superior drummer outputs. Then what I do is I go here to my kick track that I've created. Now I made a stereo audio track because I'm you know using a stereo stereo uh, output on uh, superior. And the superior output one and two, you can't select that as an input. See, it starts with three and four. If I try to select the input for the kick track here and I try to go into the plugin, superior drummer, multi out, and one and two, it's not there. That's because one and two is coming out the instrument tracks output by default. So to get around that, I took the output of the instrument track, which is essentially one and two down here, and I sent it to a bus at bus 37 and 38. That's an arbitrary bus. It doesn't matter what bus it is as long as it's also a stereo bus. From the, and then on the kick track, I made the input of that track output 37 and 38. So now if I press if I press input on this and play, while it's soloed, you will hear kick. Perfect. So basically, I do that same thing for every channel. So kicks coming out one and two, I set that through this bus. That's the only, this is the really only complicated thing, just doing this bus to this. And the rest are all completely, completely easy. I did the snare top 
out three and four. I made a snare top track, and I made the input three and four. Snare bottom, I made the output five and six. Snare bottom, I made the input five and six on this track in Pro Tools, and so on. The one thing I did that's slightly different is for each of the toms, I wanted them to be on mono tracks because I like panning toms. I kind of know the numbers I like in the in the single mono pan realm and not when I'm fake panning at stereo or whatever. So what I did was in in superior, I panned each of the toms hard left or hard right. So rack tom one and rack tom two are both coming out nine and ten. Except that rack tom one is coming out nine and ten panned one hundred percent left, and rack tom two is coming out nine and ten panned one hundred percent right. So what I did then is on this mono track for tom one, which is rack tom one and superior, I said plug in for the input, I said plug in superior drummer nine and ten left, which is essentially just nine. That way, on this Tom 1 track, all I'm getting is Rack Tom 1. And for the same for Tom 2, instead of I took 9 and 10 left, I did 9 and 10 right. And that's essentially 10 by itself, which is just Rack Tom 2 and Superior Drummer. And I did that for all the Toms. Again, the numbers, the uh, actual outputs I picked are arbitrary. The fact that I'm using 17 and 18 here and not 11 and 12, I don't know why I did that. It, it doesn't matter. As long as you have it set it up right, it, excuse me, as long as you have it set up right, it'll work fine. From there, I did all the toms, and then I did the ride symbol. It's coming out 11 and 12. Again, input 11 and 12. Reverb, out 15 and 16, in 15, 16. I did that for all of them. Uh, the room, I didn't use on my thrash track, but if I would have, I did print it, and if I would have used it, this tra the track would be here, and it would be input 22 and 23. Or, excuse me, uh, 23 and 24. So that's the entirety of the setup. Now from there, when you're writing the drum, I do that in the very beginning, before I even write any drum parts. So we'll have the scratch tracks drowned, and I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna write drums, and I'll put this, I'll set this all up like this. I leave them on input monitoring, and that way, as I'm writing drums, the signal comes through. You can also do it, uh, you can also set them as record enable, but, um, that if you if you set if you don't have Pro Tools HD or I'm not sure if the normal version of Pro Tools 10 has input monitoring. I know the normal version of Pro Tools 9 and whatnot doesn't. But if say you don't have input monitoring, so let's pretend I didn't have input monitoring because a lot of a lot of you guys out there don't have it. If I press play right now, I won't hear anything. I'm playing. Superior is sending the kick signal, but nothing's getting to any of these tracks because they're not record enabled and they're not input monitored. Now say I record enable all of them. Um, in, in other versions of Pro Tools, there's an auto input monitoring, and because I have input, the input monitoring button, this version of Pro Tools doesn't have it. But if you keep auto input monitoring on, what it does is when you're playing, so for instance, what I'm about to do right now, this is what it'll do if you have auto input monitoring on. These tracks are all record enabled. Say I just press play. It's playing right now, but I can't hear anything because I'm playing, and I didn't actively, I didn't press the record button on these. To hear them, I'll actually have to start printing these tracks like this. Now, if you're on an older version of Pro Tools and you want to not constantly be printing audio files and taking up hard drive space and just unnecessarily writing data to your hard drive while you're just writing writing everything out, there will be an option. I'm not sure exactly what uh, menu it's in, but it'll be called auto input monitoring or something of that nature. Turn it off, and that way, when you, the tracks are record enabled, you will always be listening to the input, even if you're just playing. I believe that's how it works. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. It's been a while since I've used an older version of Pro Tools. So it's that simple. When you, you write it all out and when you're done and you like the tracks, what I do is I put my timeline insertion at the beginning and I press record and play and I just let it go and let it print all the drum tracks. I let it print through the whole thing and then you can take this superior track and you can, let me, let me show you an example. So I'm gonna print a little bit here. So I printed that, and say say I printed the whole song, I didn't obviously, but say I did, I can now take this superior track, which is taking up a lot of CPU and memory usage, you know, having a virtual instrument there, I can turn it off, and now this is still here, and I can still play it just fine. No problem. And that way, I have the superior drummer, but I don't need to leave it open the entire time, and I can use all these nice plugins I have to process them instead of using the superior ones. Mind you, there's nothing wrong with the superior ones, but Generally, they are of you know average quality, and a lot of these other things I use are are of I I personally like them better than the ones in Superior. I also get to continue using the Pro Tools workflow that I'm used to with the sends and the buses and the inserts, and I can sidechain easily through Pro Tools and whatnot. So that's it. It's that simple. Um, I hope this helped you. Uh, I'm planning on doing a few more 
uh, you know, more simple, straightforward tutorials, less of the whole mix thing. Not less of the whole mix thing, but in addition to the whole mix tutorial thing I do. Uh, if you have any suggestions about what I can do, I'm trying to get some suggestions from my friends, but uh, I'm open to suggestion. Uh, so yeah, enjoy. Uh, peace.